Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Franco Sweater Knitters meeting. You're welcome to join us anytime you would like to join uh, to talk about the Franco Sweater, to learn about it, to uh, just share ideas about knitting and your progress or whatever you like. Um, and maybe you're just working on socks and you want to join us and just enjoy the chat. That's fine too. The meeting is every week uh, at 2.30 Pacific time on Saturdays and the link to the meeting is located uh, on most web page, most pages of the website franco.com that you see on the screen beneath me. Spell it correctly, please. And um, you will create a, a login, just email password, it's all that's required no charge and um, you can see the link there and you can also generate a custom fit sweater pattern for yourself in a variety of neck styles um, and you don't have to pay for anything until you're ready to to uh, pay for the pattern that you've generated um, it's only twelve dollars for the first fit and you can choose more fits if you want to and each, they are each uh, less expensive than the ones before. So that said, hello, Serena. Hello. Hi, Sumner. Hey, Frank. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Frank. Hi, Judith. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi. I don't know if you can hear me. I hear you, yep. but we can't see you. I know. I haven't figured out the way. Uh, I'm using my phone for the first time. I mean, for, oh, for this meeting, meeting. Yes. <laughs> and I haven't figured out the way to use the camera. So I'm I'm uh, logging in on my old uh, laptop and probably will switch on the way. So hi, everyone. Okay. <laughs> and hi, Will. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you all again. Jenny, I think we missed you last week. Yes, I had, um, I had guests staying for and, the weekend. And we had a newcomer also from the UK. So, oh, lovely. <laughs> yes, you might want to go back and check out the video. I just posted it online. And, oh, I um, will do, yes. Uh, I hope that she will come back and you two can meet and enjoy getting to know yeah. each other. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Frank. Nice to see you again. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Good, thank you. Good. Great. Good. Very good. Busy. Very busy. Still busy with work, Will? Yeah, one more week of the semester. But yeah. I'm really glad to have this hour to dedicate exclusively to knitting. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to think about anything the, else. The but only knitting. hour you get. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you coming and joining us. Well, I'm glad to be here. So you won't have to teach summer school? No, I'm, I am I have the option of doing it, but in the fall, I'm teaching two classes online that are new to me. So my summer is going to be filled with building up those classes. Mm. Um, so a lot of prep work, but no actual teaching over the summer. Well, good. Yeah. Here's I see Ron's coming in. <laughs> Hello, Ron. Hi. Uh, there I am. <laughs> so did you did you make it through LYS Day? Most of me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to be okay. I'm still generally ambulatory. That's good. That's good. That's good. Moved a lot of inventory. Hi, Rama. You just came in also. Hi, how are you? We're good. Hi. I had trouble logging in, but yeah. I'm, I'm there. We were running late. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody use a, a cell phone for, to Zoom and can tell Judith what to do? Oh, there you are. I'm you found it. <laughs> Hi, Judith. <laughs> Hey, Judith. 
contact Judith for all your technology questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. Yes, but if you have a problem and you want to complain, then you have to call Sumner. <laughs> oh, because he's the escalation person, remember? Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I am. Uh, oh, so strange. I, I wanted to uh, try it uh, instead of using my laptop, because in a couple of weeks, uh, I will be attending for the first time since I've been knitting the uh, Knit City in Montreal. And oh, I don't, yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> exciting, and it I is know exciting. I'm going there alone, so it's a little bizarre. But uh, I I. I'll be amongst the knitters. You'll so be among the knitters. I mean, there it's kind of like a it'll nicer be their work. community <laughs> than the community <laughs> of knitters. There's everybody is so friendly. It seems it must yeah. be all that knitting is like meditating, and so we're all mm -hmm. meditating all the time, <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> just calm and pleasant. <laughs> so Judith, is that a is it a conference, Judith? Uh, I'm not attending a um, uh, course or uh, uh, I, I'm just visiting the different uh, vendors that will be there. Oh. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. Since it's, it, it ends around five o'clock and the, meet, the Zoom meeting, Franco Zoom meeting starts at 5.30, I figured maybe I could stay there and participate in the Zoom meeting while I'm still in the Sheraton building. So. Oh, oh that'd be that fun. We could hear all about it. Yes. <laughs> and you could tell us all of your purchases. Show them. <laughs> You're just going down for the day? Uh, I, I don't know why, but I bought a pass for the Saturday and Sunday. So whatever I decide to do, yeah. I'm I can yeah. be there both days. It'll be so fun. <laughs> yeah, that's why, because it's fun. <laughs> oh, it is. You know, Tim and I have had conversations before about the differences between different kind of like conventions that we attend versus like knitting and fiber arts conventions and like the totally different sort of vibe when you're there because we do a lot we do a lot of like uh pop culture style conventions comic cons things like uh -huh. that and it's a much different sort of experience and i think part of it is because it's at like popular art conventions there are a lot of people who are just consumers mm -hmm. of popular arts but at fiber arts conventions everything participates, everyone participates also as a creative in some capacity or another. So I think it's a very different kind of atmosphere um, uh, that is really refreshing. I really enjoy going to yarn shows for that reason. Oh, that's good, yeah, that's good to know. And you're a lady, so people won't take pictures of you like you're a zoo animal. <laughs> I'm a what? <laughs> like a zoo animal. The I first year, the first year, the Twisted Skein um, had a booth <laughs> vending at Stitches SoCal. People would stop by and like take our photographs as we were just sitting there working, and we'd be like, <laughs> uh, "Hello, we're people." You were, you were a specimen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just. You should have sold. You baby. don't see men knitting every day. Yeah, I do. You should have sold uh, your face yeah. on it and got some money out of it. Frank, I appreciate this. When you're at an yeah. airport and you bring out your knitting, hmm. yes. you get the sly kind of guy. You know, they're taking yeah. a, they, they're like pointing the camera at you to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The funniest I'm thing like, that ever happened to me <laughs> was a, a man was across from me waiting for a flight, clearly trying to take a surreptitious photo of me knitting. And his shutter sound went off. Oh, that's so funny. And so he has a picture of me going like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, I was flying. All the time. 
the needle arts uh the one of the last tna summer shows i was flying from los angeles to to um cleveland and the tsa guy was like you know that he's got my my bag my like my carry-on my purse and my carry-on and he doesn't need to go through my purse like, is there anything sharp or potentially damaging in here and i say <clears throat> just my knitting needles and he says sir do not joke oh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then he's like digging and digging, pulls out my knitting. Just like, yeah, <laughs> not joking. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I've taken uh, my knitting needles through the TSA a number of times without any any question. Yeah. I think yeah. they've gotten used to seeing sets of knitting needles, maybe not in a men's luggage, but yeah. Um, there was one time they pulled me aside and said, you've got some pointed objects in there. I said, oh, those are my knitting needles. And she didn't believe me, I think. She opened it up <laughs> and she started pulling out not only the needles, but also the knitting. I said, oh, you, it, it, you really are yeah. knitting, aren't you? <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. God. I, I've had that. I, I paid for the TSA World Traveler thing. Oh, yeah. Literally a big reason is so that they stop searching my knitting bag. Yeah. <laughs> why, why don't they search your bag if you've paid for something then? What? Because I I pay for a pre-screen because I travel a lot. Yeah. So because I pay for pre-screen, they know every single thing about me. I don't have to take off my shoes or my belt or empty wow. out all my pockets. They, you go through a special line where I show my TSA pre-screened number. Right. It's yeah. TSA and pre, right? I, I just pre go right through. So, I'm beginning to think it was embedded in your palm, some device. <laughs> no. it, makes it, it makes it really nice, you know. Um, it's to the back of your neck. It's a big difference traveling. <laughs> yeah, it, it I, it hours. Well and I love it. You know, we don't have the global one, but we have the regular one. It's there's so few perks with traveling that it's so nice to have that perk. Yes. Yeah. When we were getting out of Paris, yeah. it was some crazy thing was going on globally where just Africa was just emptying out. Mm. And the the lines were three hours long and oh we i didn't think to, about that we were able to get right through because of the pre-screen yeah world events can definitely impact yeah travel. so uh, that makes yeah we sense. wouldn't have, we wouldn't have made the flight if we didn't have it we, yeah. we don't have anything like that here you can have what's called um priority pass boarding but that doesn't stop your you still have to go through screening so you can pay for priority boarding which means you go through a separate lane and you bypass all the queues but you still have to be scanned and put your all of your baggage through the scanning machines because you can't get out of that in the uk so that's something we don't have yeah they they the same thing it's a separate line they do scan the bag in but, the US, oh, they, we have something special called Equality Plus as a subscription service that's only available to people with disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> it something avoids like some of the search uh, function, yeah, I think. It, it, you don't have to remove your shoes, or I don't think your belt, maybe. Yeah, so, you still go through the metal detector thing yeah there's some things that you might you may avoid that you wouldn't otherwise avoid and some things are just happenstance anyway it's not is this a knitting right. zoom <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah we're trying talking about trying to smuggle knitting needles through the through the tsa <laughs> I want to prove that there's stitches going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I keep getting you stuck the on my in the round. <laughs> I do. I keep getting stuck. I get so lost. Frank, I'm helpless with this. Hopeless. Oh, dear. With um, this intarsia in the round. I, I spent um, one entire morning trying to knit 
uh, uh, us. Well, let me just get it. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. So I'm sleeping. trying to learn Norwegian knitting and curling now. I do love it. Look at you. I well, do love it. I like it. It's a lot less motion. And right. I was having a lot of pain in my right hand, kind of tendonitis stuff up my arm and then in the forearm and the shoulder. And so it's like, no, I'm not going to quit knitting. <laughs> yeah. Kathy does. And so Kathy then I tried so it. Then so then I went and looked. It's surprisingly easy. It's yeah. like, why do they not teach this? Right, like everywhere? the knit stitches are so smooth. Well, the knit stitches are smooth, but I mean, even purling is easier. And it's like my bloody tension is better, and I'm incredibly slow at it, and I can't hardly do it. But it's like, why do they yeah, not this teach this more? The speed will take care of itself, but what I really love about the Norwegian rib, the one by one rib in Norwegian, is yeah. for some reason it's just like an elastic band that really has some great uh, stretch to it. I'm trying to do two two rib right now, but you can yeah. see it does. It's it's yeah, it has a great really stretch good. to it. Good I love stretch. it, and um, and the tension is even on the on the knits and the pearls. And that for me is always a problem that my my knit just before the pearl is always a little wonky. And I'll concentrate and focus and I can get it for a while and then it goes every so often it's wonky if I don't like pull it quite enough or whatever. And this is like, you don't do anything. You just have the yarn over your finger and that's it. Right. You're not it, pulling, you're not tensioning, you're not. It solved my like, salvage edge issue with, with my stockinette stitch. Yeah. it's Because my like, salvage edge was always so wonky and every other and, row was tight. And it's like I'm holding so much less with my hand before yeah. oh, I was that's nice. kind of pulling. So anyway, I've just been doing it for a couple of days. So. Good. I hope you keep up. It takes. I'm trying to avoid. Be patient. Holes. Be patient. <laughs> I was going to say, did you finish your buttonholes or not? I finished one. Um, <laughs> one one swatch, and the other three I have figured out, and I actually um, wrote to my co-chair and found out some some stuff. And it's easy. I was making it harder than it was. I mean, fancy that. And um, I have been really practicing and practicing. Now we'll show the really ugly swatch. We'll just show it really fast. So just look there. No, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can't get away with that. <laughs> That's going to be the thumbnail photo now. <laughs> oh, please, no. Please, no. <laughs> this was, it's like, I, and I was, I couldn't figure out some of the things of what I'm, what I'm doing, what I was doing wrong. And then I did finally figure out what I was uh, I was leaving out one little step. I thought I was doing it, but I was doing it incorrectly. Um, and so then when I did do it, it's it's uh, it's a it's a lot better. There's one that's kind of a lot here. Huh. This is in the tutu rib. And then this is that new funky little eyelet that I want. Yeah. yeah. It's it's where you do the um you do the yarn over right where you want the buttonhole on the back side. And then on the front side, you're doing a decrease um, with the stitch just before the yarn over and part of the yarn over and with the other part of the yarn over and the stitch after. And so it kind of like makes that little, and it's got a little CSD. bit more tension to it. It's, it's cute. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Do not show it, Frank. Do not show it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They'll never pass me if you show those buttonholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they would appreciate seeing that because it means you are struggling to learn it and you are working on learning it and you're doing the research you need to do and and waiting and until done you've a, done it really bunch, well but before you submit A bunch it. that I ripped out and then it was oh, yeah. like, okay, I can get this part good. Okay, what, what's wrong? And just keep doing 
and uh, trying different ones. And so yeah, and it's, it is, it's finally looking better. So I think there's, I think there's hope. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go back to knitting in the round in Tarja. And I went and got my sample. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to change things. So is that it? That's it. Now, I, I, I worked an entire morning trying to produce a, a intarsia uh, argyle in the round, incorporating the diagonal stitches as well. And I had four diamonds and diagonal stitches, and there were so many threads, it was impossible to see what I was doing. Um, I I could do it, but it, it was just like a mass of threads sticking out in every direction, covering up everything I was trying to show. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I decided to just do a simple diamond. And so uh, this is, um, I think, I don't know, 20 stitches or tw is it 20 or 40? I don't remember. Anyway, some number, some relatively small number of stitches. And as you see, I started a diamond here and it was just one stitch wide. So it's possible, <laughs> even though it may be difficult, it's possible. Um, on the round that I'm doing, I've already got three stitches and you see here is the loop across those three stitches and I'm purling. So I'm actually going in this direction now and I'll come to here and then I'll use this loop um, yarn to purl across those three stitches and then pull it tight and it'll be latched. Then I'm ready to turn and go back in the other direction. So just give me a minute and I'll do that. And uh, let's see if I can show you in this video what you do there. Um, talk among yourselves while I pearl. Yeah, boy, really, thank you for this, because, wow, I I just, I, I am so stuck with it. So thank you, everybody, for putting up with my question. So is the, is the confusion part of the intarsia of which direction you're going? Because I know you're going in the round, but you actually really are going around, stopping and going back. You you right. are you're in going reversing directions forward. at the end of round, which actually moves as the diamond moves. Um, so this is my end of round here. And okay. you see, I when I started the round, how do I explain this? When I started the round, I had to move the marker over one because the next round was going to have five. The, oh, the edge yeah. of the diamond moves over one. And so right. the, the end of round moves over one. So um, I'm now uh, curling around. I'm almost there. And Oh, here's a little tip. If you're using my technique and you're purling in the round instead of knitting, all of my videos on the magic loop are have me knitting in the round and they don't show you the difference if you're purling in the round. When you're knitting in the round, you move these four stitches, but if you're purling in the round, you you actually move these four stitches to do my improved magic loop method. Did that make sense? I know it's just, yep. the problem with this is yeah, it's yeah. all so jumbled up and it's hard to see what I'm doing, but hopefully you get the idea. So I just moved four stitches. Um, I, I don't know, I, I didn't move them. I just moved the gap four stitches over from where it was. Yep. And because I was purling, I moved them onto the, um, this needle here. So now I'm going to finish the round. I'm going to purl to there. Um, the diamond grows one stitch larger. So that that's this 
blue stitch is going to become red mm -hmm. on this round. I need to pull out yarn to work with because it's attached at the other end of the red section. Mm -hmm. I'm going to knit those five stitches in red that the pattern calls for. And then this is my, then this next stitch is the bane of my existence. <laughs> yes. The next one after this is probably the one you're having trouble with. Okay, so I finished that. I'm going to pull this. And as you see, the, that's now attached as it's supposed to be. So yeah. I'm going to now go back in the other direction using the red yarn. So, so you increased one stitch on the purl side. And what? You yes. increased one stitch on the purl side? For the diamond? Yeah. Yeah. Both it, on it both was a, sides. It was, it was blue, and then he made it. it this blue stitch red. became red, and this blue stitch on each became side. red. And the next now one, is gonna, and that, and the end of round is going to move. What, what, Sumner? I'm going to watch because I think okay. you're answering my question. The the next round is going to move. It's going to require one more red stitch. So I'm going to pull the the end of round marker off. I'm moving one stitch over from the other, from, from this row before. I'm going to put the marker back on. And now I'm going to begin knitting in this direction. Oh, but, Eureka. But you did it. what's, no, this, that's not the hard part. The hard part mm -hmm. is this. I need to drape a blue, yarn strand over this red one before I start working with it. But there is no blue strand here. The right, blue the strand is at the other end of the last blue section in the round. Right. So it's over here. Let me see if I can find it. And funny enough, I'm okay with that part of it. Oh, is that right? Yep. That's okay. not my, you just fixed it's, am I increasing twice? within two stitches? Yes. Well, they're on two I different increased. rows. They're on two right. different rows. Uh, there you go. There you go. Thank you very much. Dawn shines over marble. They, you're getting it's ready to knit. Hard. You're getting ready to knit the next row at this point. Yep. And so you're just getting ready by moving the marker over so that the next row begins one stitch over from where it was. We then get the yarn from the other end of the section to the right of the marker, which may be, it may be all the way around the sweater to this side. Wherever the, that section ends, that's where you find the loose yarn. You drape it across all the stitches with nothing under it, like that. And then you drape it across the, the yarn you're going to start knitting with. like that. And you see it's draped across it, but it came from over here. I'm pointing my thumb with my thumb. That's my thumb pointer finger. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Wow. So now I'm just going to start okay. knitting. And now I've got my seven Shh. stitches of diamond. And your beginning of round marker is right up against that argyle. It's right in between the blue blue and the red. Uh, yes. Yeah. My beginning of round stitch was one stitch to the right. Uh-huh. And then I, now, so I solved it by having two main colors on either side of the diamond. I don't know what you mean by that. So two main I colors. I overcomplicated it. Oh. He, oh. he used an extra ball of yarn, right? Right. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah. I had an extra ball of main color. Notice I'm not using any balls. I, right. I'm using only strands. I find that's just so much easier. See, I just pulled this yep. long strand out. It wasn't tangled. It was it was tangled, but it pulled out free. And um, right. 
Did, and now you're knitting all the way around until you get to the diamond again. That's right. And I'm just doing normal intarsia. See, I. And then you're going to turn. And then I'm going to turn like I did before. In pearl. And when I get when I get to this around. last section, you'll see this this thread that I pulled across there. I'm going to be around here, and mm -hmm. I'm going to use this thread that's locked over here to knit this last color section. Wow. There you and go. then when it, when it gets over here, I can then pull this thread to tighten it up and it'll all be perfectly normal and I'm ready to turn it once again. Wow. Amazing. So Frank, do you weave in all your ends or do you splice them? Oh, I weave them in. And okay. I I use about six foot long strands if if it's just mm -hmm. an unknown amount of knitting. Um, right. I, in some of my videos, I talk about counting the stitches in a very small area and then calculating how long a yard. Figuring out be. how much you need. Um, yeah. In that way, you yeah. don't you're not using six feet of yarn to produce four stitches or twelve stitches, and then. Right. Cutting it. Um, right. And then to add a new named color yarn, you would just add it in the middle and duplicate stitch it closed. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. When, when I run Perfect. out of a uh, strand, I just, you know, do the normal wow. knit one stitch. The way I join a yarn is I knit one stitch with both of them and then continue with the other, the new one. Um, yeah. And then later weave in those two ends. Yeah. I've watched Suzanne's video four or five times um but she doesn't have the beginning around marker between the collar joints is that right yeah yeah Not that I recall. There, were, there were there were several that's things really that helpful found, um everything it's a very confusing thing to teach let me just put it that way and so well, just everybody has a different approach <laughs> of how to describe the same thing and yeah. I, I, in the end, you just have to kind of figure it out. Watch all the different videos, see which ones make sense to you and what tips you can pick up and then figure it out for yourself. That, I, I, that's about the best I can do. So, I have made video after video showing how to do this. And I still think it's, you can't just watch my videos and do it as you're showing. Yeah, well, I mean, it, they're good. But well, boy, that beginning around marker, I think, is going to solve my problem right there. Okay. And just to chase it around. Thank you so much. Oh, you're certainly welcome. Now, where yeah. is Zoom here so I can... Sorry for the private lesson, everybody. No, I, I was going to make a video for you, so but now where I just... Where the Argyle here. sock is coming up, I need to learn about Intarsia, too. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's something we'll all need to know at some point in time. Doing, I'm telling you, doing, if you do that video, you're going to get a lot of hits on it, Franco. Well, if I could do it in a way that was clear, see, I just think all these yarns sticking up get confused. Um, I do tend, you know, the the ends that, I, how shall I say, any ends, any tails that are going to be woven in, I don't let come out of the top. I push them down through the loop. So they're stuck out the bottom. That at least gets the, a lot of them out of the way. Um, though I found when I was doing my first attempt at this, when I was trying to put the diagonal stitches in also, um, there were so many ends that I couldn't keep them all pushed down. And they came up and they got tangled with all the other ones. And it was just a mess. I mean, it was like, Okay, here's a jumble of yarn. Figure out what I'm doing. That's how it's like <laughs> crazy. I found as as I go, I've been doing all of my ends inside, so yes. it's much neater. Yeah, I was going to ask and, if that yes, was helpful. I was, I was going to suggest when that you're that done would be with it, go ahead and do it so it's out of the way. As I go, That's so that right. there's nothing extra hanging. So, yes, I'm. Um, I'm excited to 
have a better second sock. Now, it doesn't matter if that's just one <laughs> stitch that's one red or three stitches that's red or five stitches that's red. It's done the same way. I I, I understand the confusion, um, but really, you just have to treat that one stitch as if it was an entire color section. And yeah. so when you pull a cord across the one stitch and, and drape it over, you may not notice that it created a loop that later when you come back and you need to knit that stitch, it's only one stitch, a, a one stitch wide loop. If you haven't left it looped down, you may not realize it's a loop. It just looks like a strand dra draped across the back of the stitch. So, but you do have yeah. to pull it out and use that strand to knit what will now be probably three stitches. Yeah. That first one, I think, is is the it's, is it's the one the that most using one because of that. So, Frank, it's like the steps are the same, regardless of how many stitches you're doing. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Boy, that is so helpful. I might have to send you, you do. socks, Frank. I also remind you that. Doing a sock using this technique is harder than doing a sweater using this technique. It, it The strands just get confused because it's a small circle. Maybe yeah. a hat would be a good thing to practice. Yeah. Because it's like be an interim size. That's right. Not as tiny as a sock, not as big as a sweater. You could practice a little bit more on a hat and have space to move. Yeah. The trick is having the last diamond over the instep on the sock. That's the mm -hmm. requirement. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who have done the Agile sock cheat and they don't do that. They just have it on the leg. So then they just seam mm -hmm. up the back of the leg and they're not doing that last diamond over the on instep. The instep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is all in an effort to not sew the foot of the sock before you start in the round. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have that's, that seam there. It's not right. Bug you. So there's no seam that's sewn where you start your foot because now the diamonds over the really instep. Good. good. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Uh, let me share my screen to show you um, what uh, what I w started to do. Oh, I think I didn't need to do that to share my screen now that I think of it. But anyway. So I created this um, pattern on Stitch Fiddle. And if you notice on the right side here, mm -hmm. uh, can you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah. that bold. Yeah. Okay, that bold black line is the end of round. That's where I decided to put the end of round as I worked up the pattern. So it would stay in the same place twice on two rounds, and then it would move over and stay there for two more rounds and then move over again. And you just Got keep it. moving the marker um, before you start the new round. Um, so what we're really doing is we are, uh, we start the first row, um, how does this work? You start the first row by knitting the row before the chart for, for these five stitches. You then do a short row turn. It's the only time you need a short row turn is at the start and the end of the chart. But you do a, if you do a short row turn, then you your, your beginning of round marker is placed and you start purling back in the other direction. So you purl these five stitches, purl all the way around to till you get to the other part of your chart, which actually may be the next stitch in this case. And then you purl across the row one all the way across till you get to the beginning of round marker. And then uh, okay. and then you turn the work, you pull a strand from this other blue section over here, cross the red one, knit one stitch in red, and then knit the blue stitches and, and continue working back, knitting round two. 
you come mm -hmm. into round two on the right side, you're still on round two, you knit those stitches up to the beginning of round marker, you turn the work, you move the beginning of round marker over one. So it's actually going to have a blue stitch in front of the new beginning of round marker after you move it, because it's this blue stitch that I'm, that I'm, that I just made black. Mm -hmm. That's still on the needle, but you moved it over and you're going to start knitting this round. I mean, purling this round in uh, stitch number four. So that's, mm -hmm. that is how you keep moving the beginning of round marker as you work this, the rounds. Okay. Nice. I took a screenshot of that. So I'll take that as a practice chart. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, I actually tried to work this using white, blue, and red. And, and not doing the white as duplicate stitch, but as its own color section. And that meant there was one, two, three, four whites on the round one and two, but then I had to add four more whites. So I had eight strands mm -hmm. of white, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think eight right. or 10 strands of blue. And three or four strands of red, it was just a mess. So I don't recommend doing it that way. Yeah, well, they say duplicate, duplicate stitching the final diamond pattern over the argyles is It's fine. perfectly acceptable, yes. As long as your duplicate and, stitches are good. <laughs> yeah, well, I was practicing. That's why I made the billow. Yes. So um, that I got. Uh, on the sock, I think they're going to be really tiny, but uh, it'll work. It'll work. So when you did your sock for the master's program, did you do the sock where you sewed the foot? Yes. Only <laughs> they tell you not to sew it. Um, you leave it I don't open. know if the instructions have changed, but I, I, you create the sock flat, and then you don't sew up the seam so they can see it well. Right, but you're down into your instep. How do you put the gusset on if you're not sewing it up? That was my... Um, oh, at some point you start working in the round. I forget exactly. I think yeah. when you begin the heel, you start working the round. Yeah, it says you have to leave the back or side leg seam unfinished, but sew or seam the side instep seams together. Oh, yeah, I didn't it's remember. It's what the instructions say. Right. right, so I was looking for... A, a book on classic construction of argyle socks nothing can't find anything well if you find a good pattern it tells you exactly what to do i mean that's all that's all i did yeah i had trouble finding a pattern and i ended up asking somebody uh, i mean you know one of the, my my uh contacts at tkga i forget yeah exactly. that's where i got the pattern from is yeah, TKGA. And, and they and, pointed me to a pattern that I could use. And so I did. It's a pattern, but the instructions, I guess, are, I don't know, for sewing up the sock is a little complicated, but oh, whatever. I see. Well, I will get there eventually. But <laughs> boy, that was very helpful. Thank you. Well, let me know if you still don't get it. We'll keep trying because I'm trying to figure out how to present this in a way that is accessible. And how many videos have I done now? Besides the color coding idea video, I think I've done three different videos that show me just doing intarsia. One of them is focused on doing intarsia flat. And then there was the original one where I did this sweater, in fact, I was working on this yeah. sweater with big blocks of color that were really easy. And then I did a little uh, wristlet type thing with a heart on it. Um, and anyway, I keep trying to make it accessible. Frank? Yes, Rana. Uh, did you get an email from me yesterday? I haven't checked my business email. Did you send it to franco.com? 
Frank at Franco.com? Yes. Oh, I haven't checked there. I can okay. check there now. No problem. Yeah, I often forget to go there. I have to do an extra step, you know. It's, oh. it's not my normal email. Should I should I send to a different address? Um, yes, I don't want to say it publicly, so I'll write yeah. it in chat. Okay. Uh, yes, I see. I, see you, I did get your email and... Um, Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Thank you for sending those. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to put my private email in chat and all of you can go to chat and copy it down and use it whenever you want to contact me. Um, dang, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I watch Ravelry. I'm on Ravelry all the time. So if somebody will message Frank or ask Frank a question on Ravelry, then I, I either text him or email him and say, Frank, somebody on Ravelry needs help. <laughs> Speaking of Ravelry, I got the nicest message from somebody on Ravelry today. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see if I if I want to read it or well, I'll read it. Hello, Frank. I just saw your sweater in the recent issue of Cast On, and I wanted to tell you how much I liked it. My favorite kind of clothing is the basic sweatshirt. And now with this pattern, she's referring to my hoodie pattern that just mm -hmm. was just published. With this pattern, I can make a dressier version of one. I love the hood. I've seen so many patterns with hoods that look so silly, either too pointed or too large. Yours is perfect. The pocket too is a wonderful addition. I'm in the middle of TKGA's level three master hand knitter program. But oh when God. I'm finished, this will be the first thing I make. I'll make the entire sweater with Gansey stitch patterns. It'll be divine. Thanks again for creating wow. this. Vicky. Lovely. Mm. I was just so thrilled to get that. It's it's so, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It just means so well much deserved. to hear from people. You put a lot of effort into helping people with these things. It's uplifting well deserved. To act like that. I'm sorry. I heard what Sumner said. Will, did you say something? Oh. I think Ron did, maybe. Oh, Tim did. It's, it's uplifting. Oh, Tim did. It's really uplifting to hear that kind of feedback. Yes, it is. It's very encouraging. And I, I published pa patterns in the magazine for several years and never heard a word from anybody. I didn't know how to get feedback. Um, they didn't know how to find me on Ravelry. Um, so I didn't know if anybody was knitting my patterns or not. I had no clue and I just kept publishing them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so nice now to have people be able to find me and send me feedback like that. And I think it's Sumner I need to thank again for suggesting the hoodie the very first time. Because I think yeah, I can't is wait to start on it. Very popular, and that that email just confirmed my suspicion. Yeah, I can't wait to start on it. There's not a lot of good guy stuff out there. It's right. It's just not. Um, thousands and thousands of sweaters for women to make. Yes. Not a lot for men. It's literally the basic Guernsey, and that's it, pretty much. Yeah. There are some designers who've got some stuff for guys, but there are few and far between. Do, does anybody know Le Garçon? No. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah they've got some them. really great men's patterns. Um, and I love Martin's story. Yeah. But after Martin's story, I'm sorry, I'm going with Frank Jern again. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Tom of Finland knitting book. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that existed. <laughs> Didn't know that existed. It does. <laughs> Did you write it, Ron? <laughs> no, it's an official knitting book. I'm 
I'm surprised. I thought you would have written that. No, no, I found it. I've already written. I didn't need to. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, some members of our audience may not know who Tom of Finland is, but I'm not. I wasn't going to elaborate for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But you see four giggling men, so. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen it. I bet all the older publications had a lot more for men because that's what women knit for was for men, right? No. Yeah. Women yeah. had to wear dresses. So. <laughs> when men's fashion settled into oatmeal with no raisins because they're too spicy. <laughs> we kind of lost that the Cambrian explosion of knit, men's knitwear in the 1970s and then those big patchwork things of the 80s and then never again no more sweaters for you people right well Robert Redford wore a lot of sweaters didn't he so I've never heard of her <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so, Serena, um, we're getting close to the end, and I wanted to give you a chance to talk about the Knit Whiz KAL, Knit Along. Well, we're um, really excited. It launches May 15th with a launch party Zoom. Um, I think Kathy said we have about 20 people participating. Yeah. And I finished my sample sweater for the Knit Along, so I knit the DK version. You can see that on her website or on Ravelry on the, the group. So finally got that done, got some pictures out. And uh, so we're really excited about it. If anybody is interested, it's called uh, Kits That Fit because she was selling the yarn kits for the sweaters, but it there was still an option to use your own yarn. And of course, she'll give you access to knit with software for free so that you can knit uh, one of three different patterns, actually. And so the website about, is knitwiz.com. Yeah, knitwiz.com. So I think people are really taking advantage of accessing the software for free and trying it out. So we're excited about that. Nice. Is it whiz with an H or no H? Whiz like wizard or whiz like <laughs> wizard? <laughs> whiz like w I Z. Okay. Knit whiz. W I Z dot com. I, I thought it was with an H. So good. And all of her patterns are on Ravelry or on her website. So you can see them. And I guess Ravelry would direct you to the Knit Whiz software site if you wanted mm -hmm. to purchase them. So it'll be exciting to see everybody knitting those and seeing how they come out and how they handle the software and be a lot of fun. Um, Are you doing it, Cindy? I thought you might be. I'm trying to get my buttonholes done. Okay. <laughs> The DK sweater knits so fast. I mean, if you it I it thought I I thought about it and we'll we'll see. It but, like goes um, super fast. I I just have not been making as much progress as I hoped I would. <laughs> but I was thinking I mean I'm working on it. That I'm I guess it. the sweater that I sample sweater I knit, I don't know if a man would like it or not. I guess you could um knit it with more suitable colors and with no ease or less ease. And I think it would be um, for in either one. But you guys would be the best gauge of that. I think it's inappropriate for men to like things. <laughs> men should sit down like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm excited because one of my students from my Franco class um, has started on the uh, bus shaping that I had developed for the um, software or see, remember this? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. I remember uh, that when you were doing that. The knees seam. So mm -hmm. she got to the point in her top now whee, where she is. Um, maybe if I do that. That did not help. No, no I can't see. <laughs> Very bright. Even worse. No, it's too bright. It's worse. There's a knee seam <laughs> that comes in from the armhole in the center of the arm. The arm will shaping, which would be the arm's eye on a sewn garment. Um, and there's a way of doing bust shaping that makes the garment wider uh, rather than simply adding length. So she's at the point she came in last Sunday and we, we uh, went through her pattern and used my generator. So this is the first time it's been used outside of a swatch. Uh, so I'm very excited to see how it goes out. So we did all the math and the measurements together to try and put that customization in. And then um, if it works, we'll try and make it more widely available. As, uh, so that's uh, like what I think of as, as a princess scene. A lot yeah, of times. Um, a pr I mean, there's a technical difference, which I guess is the best oh, kind okay. of difference if you're fussy. Right. Um, okay. A princess seam generally comes from the shoulder down the bust, and a Viennese seam comes from the arm side. Oh, I guess I was always calling it the wrong thing because the the, the garments that I had, like even the jackets and stuff that had yeah. it, it was coming from the middle. They of the kind of merged, and they're down. all called a princess seam more often than okay. not. Okay, yeah. Like if you Google princess seams, half of them you see will be Viennese. Because uh, it's the, when you're when you're sewing, the front is different panels. You've got the the side one, and then you've got this the front, or maybe two fronts depending, and then yeah. another side one. Exactly. So my yeah. those students are are working hard at the tops of their sweaters, and a lot of them have chosen very very. Um, either fine gauge yarns or high stress professions that uh, make the sweater <laughs> slow going, but but we're getting there. We're doing some shaping, so I hope to have some more to show pretty soon. But it's it's pretty exciting stuff in in the Franco world over here. That's great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have something else they want to share in our last moments? We didn't do a lot of showing our knitting progress today. Does somebody have something that they want to show? I'll show my my um, dream bird. I've nearly finished now, so I'll show it in, oh. in sections. Oh. So, so you can oh. see there, and then the color starts to get a bit lighter on the feathers. Yes, that looks then, like so much fun even lighter still so i'm on the last couple of feathers so it's just going to white now so yes. uh, yeah wow how many How's feathers are you doing uh, hang on. that looked like a lot of feathers 30 14 15 17 19 about 20 yeah wow that's a lot <laughs> it's big <laughs> yeah yeah so it's it should be beautiful job tomorrow. it's it's lovely thank you yes it, it should be finished tomorrow so yeah oh. and then i'm i'm doing the, the knit with so i will start my swatching tomorrow oh. well good well it is about that time and we like to keep it to an hour even though i was a minute late this this time <laughs> i'm usually not late but Sorry about that. Um, it was really nice to see you all again. And thank you for coming and joining our meeting. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Good to see everybody. Bye.